Hello and welcome back to OC Avery. Today in this video, uh, this is all about mules and hybrids. Uh, so the plan is that I'm going to give you some uh, general information, bonding tips um, and factors you need to control when actually bonding the birds uh, and come to breeding them. Uh, and then I'm going to show you some examples of uh, mules, which I have. I don't have any examples of hybrids at the moment. And then I'm going to show you the pairs I have got sorted for um, mules and hybrids. So I've got two pairs of miniature um, mule slash hybrids. So we're gonna have a miniature mule pair and a large mule pair. And then we're also going to have a miniature hybrid pair and a large hybrid pair, um, as well as having the opportunity to have a further mule or hybrid pair, which I'll talk to you about later in the video. So uh, let's get right to it. So what actually is a mule? So a mule is a bird that is 50% a finch and 50% a canary. So you have um, something like a British finch, so for example, that could be you have a linnet cock, you put that with a canary hen and you have a linnet mule. So a mule is a finch cross canary. Um, and generally they are easier to breed than normal hybrids because canary hens and canary cocks will generally mate with anything. Um, so that is really mules uh, and there are different classifications which I'll come to in a bit. So what is a hybrid? So a hybrid is a cross between two finches. Um, so for example, that could be a common crossbill cross Siberian bullfinch. That is a hybrid. Uh, you, that could be a linnet cross siskin. That is a hybrid. That could be a greenfinch cross chaffinch. Anything uh, in that in that sort of case. And obviously, it doesn't have to be a British finch um, for mules or hybrids. So it could be for something like maybe a Mexican house finch cross bullfinch is still a hybrid, and a Mexican house finch cross canary is still a mule. Um, and obviously it's just specifying the type of mule. So you would say a Mexican house finch mule or a linnet mule or a red pole mule with hybrids, you obviously state both parents. So generally hybrids and mules are all infertile. Now there are exceptions to that rule. One being the red factor canary, um, which is actually derived from a red siskin cross with a canary. Um, so you get the red siskin mule and that can then be fertile to produce F2s if you just put that to another red siskin mule. Uh, but you could actually put the red siskin mule cock with a canary getting a, um, a G1, I believe it is. Or no, sorry, an R1. Um, and that is then when you breed the the, um, the mule back into a pure line of a pure species, um, which actually derives the red factor. Um, so generally mules and hybrids are infertile with exceptions such as that one, but also occasionally the odd birds are actually fertile. For example, this year, um, a Chapin Island bred a red pole cross siskin hybrid with a white canary to produce a siskin red pole mule, um, as it would be called really. Um, another example was a crossbill cross greenfinch last year was bred with a greenfinch hen to produce um, a, a bird that was 75% greenfinch and 25% crossbill. So there are exceptions, however a species is defined as two individuals that can reproduce to produce fertile ox offspring. Um, now that is generally the rule, however there are exceptions as I just talked to you about. With the uses of mules and hybrids, there are generally two uses. So the first use of a bird, which is a mule or hybrid, is as a bird for exhibition. Now, with exhibition birds, you want them to be as large as possible and ideally uh, a yellow feather. So when I say yellow, that is the intensive feather and not actually the colour yellow. Um, so for example, you can just see here a cinnamon variegated Norwich hen. Uh, she is a buff bird. But obviously, as you can see, she has cinnamon visual and she has yellow visual, but that she is still a buff bird. Whereas if I take, um, I'm trying to think of a, a yellow bird I have in here, there's several red poles, um, which are yellow birds. I do believe there is 
at least two canaries that are um, yellow birds as well. Uh, so yellow is actually just the intensive feather. Uh, so with exhibition mules and hybrids, you want them to be yellow birds as they show the colour much better. You also want them to have um, really equal um, visual representation of both parents. Um, so you can see both parents in them rather than too far one way and not enough the other. So for example, one bird that stands out to me in particular that is very one-sided is actually linnet mules. I have seen a lot of linnet mules that are so close to actually just linnets. Um, yeah, you know, I've been to several auctions in the past where they have linnet mules up for sale and I've been debating with it, some of the, the chaps who run it who weren't actually sure what they were themselves um, saying is that a linnet or is that a linnet mule because it's showing a very slight characteristic of it being canary but the majority all being linnet purely. Um, so they are a bird that I've found at least is generally one-sided in the parentage but birds that aren't very one-sided in the parentage are birds for example um red pole mules red pole mules look a complete half half generally um as you wouldn't say it was a canary but you can't say it's a, a red pole either so um they are generally one-sided um in some and very uh half half split down the middle with others um, so that is the first use of uh, mules and hybrids is in exhibition. So the second use for mules and hybrids are actually as songbirds. Um, so those birds are bred just for their song capabilities rather than the looks in most cases. Now obviously having a mule which looks great as well as sings great is even better but usually they are had just for the song. So mainly the birds that are bred um, as songbirds are any goldfinch mules um, as the goldfinch has a fantastic singing capability and a lot of people absolutely love the goldfinch song. Um, so goldfinch mules generally are the songbirds to go for rather than the birds for exhibition although they do win their class in exhibition but um as f well i've been to several shows now uh, obviously last year um and a few the previous year and i haven't seen a goldfinch actually sorry a goldfinch mule actually up there on the show bench as um as one of the top mules or hybrids in any of the categories other than their own class as a goldfinch mule um so other birds that are used for the songbird mules and hybrids are pretty much any goldfinch base. Um, obviously you're going to find that goldfinch cross canary has the singing capabilities of both parents, which absolutely makes it fantastic for, uh, for songs. Um, Siskin mules generally are quite good for um, song and at least picking it up. I bred a Siskin mule this year. Uh, it was a Siskin cock to satinet canary hen. And um, he has picked up goldfinch song okay as well as a bit of a mixing canary in there and a little bit of a mix of siskin so it produces a variety of notes um is in here at the moment so i'm going to show you very shortly him and the other mules i've got uh, but they do vary with singing capability so if you are looking for a singing mule i would 100 percent recommend a goldfinch mule every time now there are actually several classes um, of mules so um, generally they are divided into four separate categories and then subcategories from there so you have miniature mules which are mules on the smaller side such as siskin mules goldfinch mules and linnet mules and um, the larger mules are then things like greenfinch mules crossbill mules and bullfinch mules um, so they are sort of separated into larger mules and smaller mules. Um, with the larger mules at least, uh, you should use a Norwich canary. So as you can see here, we have a Norwich hen here. Now she will be breeding just pure Norwich for me next year, hopefully. So which will be split for cinnamon, um, which I will then hopefully get some new cinnamons or split cinnamons in next year to produce some visual cinnamons, uh, which obviously will be related to her. Um, but I do have um, a couple of other Norwich hens um, and a Norwich cock. So two of the Norwich are actually going into the mules this year. Um, 
so that will be an interesting result. Um, but obviously birds for exhibition, you want the Norwich rather than the smaller birds. Um, so that's miniature mules and uh, large mules. Um, with the miniature mules as well, you can generally do any sort of type of canary. Even I think the Norwich actually would help, you know, the size would be brought down by the finch cock. Um, but obviously the, the sort of the size and the shape of the bird will be brought about by the Norwich hen. Um, so an example of a canary would use for a miniature mule might be, for example, an Irish fancy. You put an Irish fancy with a siskin, you're going to get some very small mules from that. Same for maybe you did Irish fancy cross goldfinch. You're going to get small mules for that, but more song uh, than exhibition there. Um, then we have miniature hybrids. So miniature hybrids um, are hybrids of two small finches generally. So uh, that could be a red pole cross siskin. That could be a goldfinch cross siskin. That could be a goldfinch cross red pole. Um, maybe a linnet cross goldfinch or something along those sort of lines. Um, so ultimately they are the, the sort of the small miniature hybrids. And then you have the large hybrids, which are something like a greenfinch crossbill, a crossbill bullfinch, a greenfinch bullfinch, and so forth. Um, so they're, they're sort of divided into those categories. Now that isn't saying that with, especially with hybrids at least, you can't put a small finch to a large finch as you can obviously. So uh, you could do a goldfinch cross with a crossbill as you might have seen in the thumbnail. Um, you could do a greenfinch cross siskin. Um, yeah, they're quite nice hybrids to be fair. I've seen red pole cross greenfinch. They're actually quite nice. Um, if you get a yellow bird, especially a yellow cock bird, which is great. Um, and you know, th there's no, there's no limit in that aspect. And um, there's obviously birds like the red pole bullfinch as well. Um, that is really an absolutely stunning hybrid to look at. Um, I absolutely love the, the look of those. So I'm hoping to try one maybe 2022. So I have got um, a pair of Siberian bullfinches. I've got the hen down here, the cock's in and the shed. Um, and I won't be using those for red pole bullfinch at least. I would probably be trying to use those in either, um, maybe even northern hybrids. So maybe a northern bullfinch, a northern goldfinch across northern bullfinch or even something like a crossbill cross northern bullfinch because you increase the size there getting a larger hybrid or a larger mule even if you did it with a canary um, so those are the sort of the, the four general categories um, which are then divided down into subcategories now the subcategories generally go as follows so you would have a lot of um, species like hybrid and mule specific so it would say siski mules in this class goldfinch mules in this class greenfinch mules in this class etc something like that um, but there are also other categories so it might be a light goldfinch mule or a clear goldfinch mule which is when you have a bird that isn't you know of a, a dark color and is rather just one bright color so for example you can see a um, satinet canary up there um, and if for example you had a goldfinch mule of that color then that would be classed as a clear mule um and then there are the hybrid categories so you would usually find that that would be yeah it, it would state the type of hybrid um but also if it was a clear hybrid um or a dark hybrid um and then there are usually also classes for buff birds and yellow birds. I found at least, especially with goldfinch mules. Um, I had a goldfinch mule cock uh, up until February when um, sadly I lost him. Um, if, I'm not sure what, obviously he didn't get out. Uh, he just died randomly one day. Um, but he, um, he was classed as a dark yellow goldfinch mule. Um, and he did fantastic in his categories, uh, yet you would also get probably buff goldfinch mules, etc., as it would expand across the spectrum of mules and hybrids. So I'm going to show you some examples of mules um, I've got. So this here first is a linnet mule. Um, now, you can't see him great because the cage is slightly dark, uh, but as you can see, he is I would say more one-sided than um, than a lot of the mules, um, but he isn't overall 
as much of a, a, a whole whole one-sided linnet. You know. um, he is quite much bigger than a linnet, um, and actually I believe he might even be classed as a large mule in some cases. Um, <clears throat> this is a, a number three show cage, and it does fill this uh, out quite well, to be fair, especially when it's in top form. Um, he has been molting these past few weeks, so he is looking a bit rough, but overall okay. So that is a linnet mule. <clears throat> Then we have a red pole mule. Um, so this is a mealy red pole cross uh, canary. Um, as you can see, he's got some much better colour in. And as I spoke about before, uh, I believe that this is really a, a good example of a 50-50 split in um, the parentage, where you have the overall size and shape of the canary, but the sort of the, the sort of the look around the face and the chest of the red pole. Um, but but not really, um, nothing compared to a pure red pole that you would believe he was a pure red pole or a pure canary. I think he's got a good split of both parents. Um, as you can see, he's working the purchase quite well there. Um, he does need to steady out a bit, but overall, he's quite a nice bird and he's doing great. And then we have this. So this is a Siskin mule. I bred him this year. Uh, his father was a Siskin and his mother was a Satinet Canary, a black eyed Satinet. Um, so he is about finished the malt now. I have had him on colour feed, so you've seen a mix of, his, of orange and green in there. Um, and overall, I do actually like that blend, especially on the, the um, chest. It looks sort of a bit of a sunset look. And overall, not too empowering considering he is um, half Siskin. And obviously, I do like the, um, the sort of face mask around there and I guess you would say the eyebrows are actually quite a nice colour um, not too yellow, not too green and obviously not overly red which would um, ruin the mule so I'm really pleased with him he's got some really good markings on him as well down the sides at the least um, and overall I am pleased with him so he's actually on Goldfinch Song as well uh, he does sing occasionally but at the moment especially with the molting he, um, he hasn't sang a lot. Um, so these three are my examples of mules. Um, or my best three at least. I'll give you a quick look here. Um, in here we have a Siberian goldfinch mule hen. Uh, she has a bit of an injured wing so we'll be going shortly. And we have a red pole mule cock in there who is for sale at the moment. Um, from there we had then have uh, four mule hens in this cage. So I'll give you a quick look in there. In there we have um, the sister to the Siskin mule. Uh, she's closest now. Um, and then we have in there three goldfinch mule hens. Um, now these are, are quite nice furs and I do like them. However, they are hens, so don't have any of the, the real exhibition traits that I'd be looking for. There's a bit of a better look at them. Um, just wanted to make sure that you get them in some better light. So as you can see, especially with the goldfinch mules, they are sort of half-half again. Got the goldfinch mask, um, but not, not the over-empowering side of the goldfinch. But these are hens, so won't be displaying the best colours. Now, all the tips I'm about to give you are from my experiences and other people's experiences from what I've read online. So I do not claim to be a professional by any means. Um, this year I bred my first mule and I haven't tried hybrids yet, but I will be trying next year. Um, so the first tip I'm going to give you is actually getting the birds paired as early as possible. Um, so I've had um, four pairs uh, sort of paired up, put together. Um, for the past week now, so I've been looking to get those really sorted and get those birds in um, either just before the molt or just after the molt, especially some have just sort of just come through the molt um, and obviously I've bred some of myself, so there is no risk in actually moving them there. Um, <coughs> apologies, um, but also then with um, sort of pairing them together, the, the longer you have them together, the better chance you have of actually breeding from them. Um, they obviously get used to each other a lot more um, and can bond as a pair, as in the wild, uh, birds generally start to pair up uh, over winter, spend the winter together, and then 
move into breeding mode from about March um, and really that's when they start to come into the condition um, and then by April sort of May time they're, they're fully raring ready to go um, and they're, they're obviously already paired up so they're not having to go through the faff of having a mate um, now that obviously is different what we do in the hobby so we might run one cock to two hens or we might even run um, several you know different cocks to different hens each pairing so I might have uh, a red pole hen and she has three different cock birds um, through s three different clutches um, but obviously that, that doesn't really affect massively I found at least but with mules and hybrids you want to be keeping them together and bonded as much as possible um, for as long as possible to increase your chances of having that pair actually bonded um, now I have my mule and hybrid pairs in um, not huge cages at the moment because I want to make sure that they are interacting but also have the room to get away from each other in the event that they need to if there's any squabbling. Um, so overall especially with the small finches I'm not overly concerned about that squabbling but as you will see with the larger finches I have to be a bit more wary um, with who I put together um, but also the space I give them. Um, as I, don't, I would rather that I don't have birds being injured. Um, another bonding tip, um, other than obviously the, um, the, the overall, just put them together early, um, would be making sure that the birds kept fit. Um, so again, that's a, a very fine line between having them in a too big a cage where they don't bond and having them in a too small a cage where they actually fight. Um, so it's important to keep the birds fit, active and healthy, um, really, because it's going to give them a, a lot more opportunity to interact and bond with each other, but also get them into condition um, over the winter, getting that fitness up. And then from about February is when I'll put them into larger cages once I know that they're bonded to get them fit ready for the breeding season um other little tips i would say are lights so uh, especially depending on what you're actually trying to breed uh, lighting is very important to uh, get the birds into condition um, so I won't really, other than one pair, I won't be having to give artificial light to as they sort of came, come into condition around the same time. Um, but if you are attempting any mule or hybrid that maybe really generally involves a crossbill, then you are going to want to have some artificial light on that as um, the crossbills come into condition from about January sort of time and will be breeding from January. Um, so for example, if I said you're putting a goldfinch cock to a crossbill hen, then I would say that you want them on artificial light from January because that goldfinch cock isn't going to come into condition until May to June sort of time. And by then the crossbill hen's going to have had enough and she's going to be already molting. As I found with my pairs this year, my crossbill pairs both stopped breeding um, and started to molt from about May. Um, so uh, you want to get that goldfinch cock into condition earlier to make sure that he uh, fertilizes those eggs. But whilst also trying to keep the crossbill hen going a bit slower and a bit off until slightly later, just to get that cock bird into condition. Um, now that does differ depending on what you're breeding. Um, so I will show you some examples very shortly of what I will be trying. So this is my miniature mule pair. Um, so this is a Siskin cock I bred this year in May and a Norwich hen from last year. Um, I didn't breed her um, or breed off her this year. I didn't have her until August. Um, you may remember several videos back when I actually <coughs> brought the Norwich home. Um, so it, the plan really is to have this pair bonding now. She has proven this year for the guy I got her off. So um, all, all's good with her and she knows what she's supposed to do. And the Siskin cock seems to be interested as you can see there. He's checking out the hen. Um, he is active, he is singing and um, has been displaying to her several times even though he is just finishing the mould. Um, that Norwich hen has got some good size to her. Um, slightly small head, um, but overall nothing I'm overly concerned about um, because considering she's with a Siskin as well, that size will be massively increased in the mule just from the Norwich. Um, also something to be aware of is with this pair at least, I will be um, probably dividing the Siskin cock off when these guys come to breed 
um, as the siskin cocks can be buggers when it comes to uh, raising chicks and having hens on eggs i've found that they destroy eggs if not will kill the chicks so i will be removing him as soon as she's on uh, a full clutch uh, uh, on a you know, full clutch of eggs and she's sat i will divide him off probably put him into a larger cage to keep him fit and uh, we'll go from there to see how this pair produces now i don't expect this pair to go down until about april time uh, when the norwich hen will probably be in condition by then and the siskin cock will be just coming into condition and um, this year i did produce the two siskin mules um by a siskin cock to uh, satinet canary hen um and they were in late april to early may um so i've got to make sure that i get that siskin cock in condition for the norwich hen um Something else I will also avoid is the really oily and the fatty seeds because I don't want that siskin cart getting fat when it's um, about time to fill those eggs. So this is my miniature hybrid pair for next year. So this is actually a, um, a, a yellow intensive feathered siskin cock um, with a cinnamon yellow intensive feathered red pole hen. Um, now you might be asking if this would produce um, uh, cinnamon hybrids, however it won't because it is the hen who is cinnamon, um, so all she will produce is um, the hybrid cocks which will actually be um, split for cinnamon, but obviously it, well, will we actually ever see that in use? Most likely not, unless we have the odd chance that the hybrid is fertile which will be very, very um, lucky indeed. Um, so I actually, this pair have been squabbling a little bit, um, but not too bad. You might recognize this, this um, cinnamon red pole hen. Um, I had it on several clutches this year. Um, however, none of her eggs were full uh, because it turned out that the cock bird I had her in with um, must be infertile, I believe. Um, I actually had him running with several hens um, at one point to just try and get any eggs full, and no eggs ever were filled by him, um, which is a shame. So, um, next year, the plan for her is obviously doing the miniature hybrids. Um, the Siskin Cross Red Pole, as well, uh, is, is a nice little hybrid. Uh, you get good, good show of both parents. Um, in that uh, you're going to get a hybrid that is almost like a red pole base but it's got some very clear siskin characteristics such as the long thinner beak rather than the, the shorter stubby beak um, of the red pole and uh, you get the cap from the red pole on sort of a, a black and black head um, and ultimately it's going to just depend on uh, how, how uh, everything falls together with the pair um, and the young that are produced um, there is a very slight chance that we could get um, some sort of cinnamon resemblance in the young um, if that cinnamon gene in her is actually a co-dominant gene um, but we'll have to see what is produced but overall I'd be more than happy just to have some siskin cross red poles um, another reason that I'm actually doing it this way rather than the siskin hen uh, with a red pole cock is because several people have found that um the red pole um with a red pole father the uh, the young hybrids tend to have drooped wings uh, so they drop them down a lot which is obviously not ideal um, and isn't really something i'd be wanting to have for an exhibition bird so actually pairing it this way um will reduce the chances of having those drop wings um, which will make a much nicer hybrid. So we're going to see how this pair develop. Um, I have seen them feeding each other several times. Um, I haven't been able to catch that on camera as of yet, but we'll see uh, what happens over the next few months. And hopefully sooner or later, once they've, uh, they've spent a lot more time with each other, sharing baths, sharing food sites, um, and other bits like that, then we might have some chance for some red pole siskin hybrids.
Okay, so now that we've seen the miniature hybrid pair and the miniature mule pair, it's time for the larger hybrid and the larger mule pair. Um, so at the moment I have them both in here. Uh, now you might be able to see already, which is why this cage looks a little bit trashed, is because we have a cross built in there. So this is my large hybrid pair. So um, at the forefront, you can see the crossbill hen. So I bred her this year. Um, she was an early bird, so she was a March, April baby. Um, whereas the cockbird behind her was actually from July. Um, so that's a green feature cock behind, there we are. He's just come to the front now. And then we have the uh, crossbill hen. So this will be actual, actually a really quite an interesting pair to see what is produced um, in terms of the colour of the young as we will get normal greenfinch cross crossbill hybrids but we might also get uh, silver, so agate mutation uh, hybrids as well as pied hybrids. Um, the cockbird here as you can see um, his father was actually a silver um, or an agate greenfinch uh, so he is split for silver but also his father is a pied carrier with his sister actually being a visual pied who um, we might see later in the video. Um, so he could potentially carry pied as well as um, being split for a game. So the young hybrids, um, I believe it would be any hens from the pair would be um, either, they're definitely the agay and potentially pied um, as long as he actually carries that gene. So we'll have to see what happens there. Um, this pair have been together now for two weeks um, and I have got them together in actually just a double breeder at the moment, uh, but a, a slightly larger double breeder. So I'm just keeping an eye on them there um, as I've just had to keep really just keeping an eye on them um, and how they're doing um, as I had to make sure that that green finch was in good condition when I put him with her just to make sure that if there was any squabbling which there was at first that um, he would have more chance of getting away uh, which he's done fine and now they are getting on quite well together um, it is taking some courage for him to actually come to the feed pot and feed with her um, but however that is why I do give all of my hybrid and mule pairs two different places to feed just in the event that if there is any squabbling that both pairs will be able to feed with no problems um, as you can see there, she's, you know, there, there you are, a little bit of squabbling there. Um, but overall, they're quite happy sat next to each other uh, and they do roost together at night. So I'm really hoping that, fingers crossed, we will get some hybrids from this pair next year. And then it's time to look at the large mule pair. So at the forefront, we have a yellow Norwich cock. Uh, so you can see he is definitely an intensive feathered and um, however the only property I can say that lets him down is his size and um, he is still larger than the greenfinch hen and um, marginally um, he does have some good size to him but I could do with a uh, slightly larger chest and uh, be, being larger in that sense but also a larger head uh, but overall I think that he's going to contribute more with his feather type than he would with the size to this pair um, ideally I would have liked to have actually done it with a green Norwich just because we've got um, that completely green hybrids but we're going to, sorry, mules but it will be interesting to see um, what is actually produced as mules from this pair uh, as it is a clear cockbird with a normal greenfinch hen um, now many of the clear greenfinch mules that have been produced and especially the lighter uh, mules have been bred from pied greenfinch cocks or hens with uh, a white Norwich hen or cock um, but we'll have to see overall what happens from this pair and um, it will be nice to get some greenfinch mules as I did try this year uh, with a agate greenfinch hen and a, uh, a sort of a, a clear or Norwich cock um, with a bit of a cap um, but I'll now talk to you about the mistakes I made this year which is where I'm going to improve next year.
Now, something that I found worked really well this year was actually having the mule pairs in smaller cages rather than larger cages. And that was all due to the fact that the birds were interacting more having them in a smaller cage than a larger cage. So this year I actually produced the two siskin mules. So I showed you the uh, young siskin mule, the cock and the hen. And I produced those from a wire double breeder. Um, the canary hen went down to nest, siskin cock, treaded a few times, and got some full eggs. Uh, I removed the siskin cock, put them into a, um, <coughs> a larger flight cage down, um, down here um, and kept him fit in there while she was rearing the young. Um, so that was success. However, I realized where I went wrong this year was actually with the size of the cage, I bonded the Greenfinch um, Norwich, so the, the Greenfinch mule pair. Um, so I, I had them in a small wire breeder um, and put them together in December. So it was actually quite late compared to the Siskin mule pair, which I put together in October last year. And um, really what let, what ultimately caused it not to work um, was I put them in there and they were squabbling a lot. So I thought, well, I need to sort that. So I chucked them into a much larger cage, which was one of these down here. So these cages down here are three foot wide, three foot deep and two feet back. And that ultimately cost it for me <coughs> because the birds weren't interacting enough. Um, we had, you know, we had the, the Norwich um, cock who he would sort of sit on the floor a lot. He wasn't fit enough uh, and wasn't, couldn't be bothered to get fit. And we had the Agate Greenfinch hen up on the perches bouncing. So they never interacted um, uh, or, or very rarely on occasion, which really didn't bond the pair. So um, I had them down on four sets of eggs this year. The hen went down four times and any time none of the eggs were fertile. So um, it was really unfortunate in that sense that we didn't get the um, greenfinch mules produced this year. Uh, but I know where I went wrong and I know where I need to do it now. Um, so along with that, we actually, um, something that I found worked this year, which I didn't do with the greenfinch mule pair. And ultimately that was just out of, um, you know, you're just inexperienced and um, not trying, not trying things and not thinking on. Um, but actually, when I gave this, because this is Furtivit by Versa Larga, and I gave that to the Siskin uh, Canary pair, so the Siskin Mule pair, and I found that that really picked up the Siskin cock and he was really bouncing, getting fit as I had one perch either end of the cage. So he was going back and forth rather than and flying rather than just hop, 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 which doesn't get them fit. And I found that this ultimately helped massively when producing that, those Siski mules, because it increased the fertility in both of the birds so that when they came together and the Siskin cock mated with her, that there would be there would be basically an increased sperm count in the Siskin cock, so there was much more chance of him fertilizing those eggs. Um, and I should have done that with that Norwich cock uh, and the Greenfinch hen. Now the Greenfinch hen was um, obviously fertile, as I put um, a Greenfinch cock in with her in about July, and they had a round of young, uh, and then from there they actually uh, fostered me um, it actually, the greenfinch cock who is with the crossbill and uh, a young bullfinch cock who we saw a few episodes ago, um, who is still with, the, will, with me but um, is now reserved and is going to a new home probably before Christmas. So we'll see what happens there with um, him. But ultimately, Ferti Vit did an absolutely massive favour for me with... Um, getting the increased fertility so i am going to start supplementing this from about january for all the pairs probably slightly earlier in the green finch crossbill pair because the way the crossbill wanting to go down from about january and um, i want to make sure that that green finch cock is in good condition he is fit and that he will fill me those eggs and um, so i'm probably going to supplement this from as early as maybe even mid-november for the pair there um, and then from January to February sort of time with the Greenfinch mule pair, the Siskin mule pair and 
the Red Pulse Siski pair. Um, so that is with 30 of it. So that was a massive, massive help and really did contribute this year. One of the other things that I found contributed was calcium lugs. So I did that by Versalaga as well. Um, <coughs> and that means that any of the eggs that were produced by the pears um, were much stronger and much more well formed I found at least um, not to a point where the chicks couldn't get out of the eggs but rather just um, the eggs were, were, were less brittle so the hen would have less chance of breaking them um, so obviously I gave this and this is a, a soluble calcium supplement um, so just basically on, on simple on that that is uh, a scoop right there, level scoop, which is five mil, and that goes to 250 mil of water. So I put that in my water um, weekly, especially during breeding season, for everything. Um, but also, I put it in monthly with everything else, just to make sure that everyone's got the calcium. With the 30 of it, it is four scoops again to a liter of water, um, and that was that was a massive help, really. And um, I found that. Supplementing both of those helped me produce the Siski mules, um, which I did this year. And then there was finally 30 oil. So this is again Versalaga. So as you've seen, a lot of Versalaga products, and I aren't, and, and you know, I'm not sponsored by them. So um, if you do get Versalaga from this, then uh, well, great for them, I guess. Um, <coughs> if you buy directly from them. And if what not, um, I'm not sure, but Avian World Dublin might um, stock Versalaga, um, Super Pets maybe, Bavistas, um, Direct Bird Products, um, and uh, yeah, uh, companies like that. So, and if not, they'll have a substitute. Um, so Ferti oil is literally just uh, wheat germ oil. And to put that in the food, a few drops of that, really just increasing that fertility. So I use fertility oil um, and then I can buy it in a bit of a large quantity here. This is one that is designed for pigeons, so it gives you pigeon um, sort of volumes on it. But um, uh, yeah, I just, I just mix that in the food and make sure it's not too oily, but it's there. And um, that was absolutely fantastic for getting all of the birds into condition, not just the mule pairs. Um, so they are the supplements I've obviously mentioned about lighting before so other things I would say with lighting um, is um, that it's you know increase that lighting for the birds like this pair I will have them on artificial light from about December um, as I want to make sure that that green finch cock is in good condition when it comes to breeding also something just to mention quickly is that i will be getting a few more birds this weekend so you'll see them in next week's video um so that is actually two new species uh, but more subspecies so you might be able to work it out from that um however i will be getting a few new birds which will be great and um one is a trio of new species so they're going to be absolutely fantastic to try um, and I'm really looking forward to getting them as well. Uh, it's two normals and a mutation, but I'm not going to tell you what they are until next week's video when you see them. Um, I will tell you this one that I am actually collecting a hen for the yellow hammercock. Um, so, um, you know, that, that that's going to be fantastic. You're going to see her in next week's video and I will probably also do a dedicated video just to the yellow hammers on caring for them, uh, the food I supplement them with and um, just a bit of general information about them. I have kept them once before, um, but that, that was only briefly. Um, so I'm going to sort of take you through the journey of keeping the yellow hammers and taking them through to next year's breeding season and hopefully getting some young from them. And then the final bird that I will be bringing in is again, I'm not going to tell you, but it will be a bird that I will be either doing a hybrid from or a mule from. So uh, definitely will be an interesting and exciting one but um, we're going to have to see what happens um, for the moment. I'm going to get him back, make sure he's okay, he settles down fine, and as soon as I know he's comfortable, I'm going to look at sourcing a hen for him. Um, that hen might be a siskin hen. Um, I have got a spare siskin hen at the moment, so I might do a, a hybrid with that. But if not, it will be a mule, and that mule will be for song. So um, if you can work that out, 
then fantastic and you will see that in next week's video. So this week's eye catcher is a Agate Greenfinch hen. Uh, so this is actually the hen I tried for mules this year with, with the Norwich cock, but we didn't produce anything from that. Um, so I noticed her really the other day, um, I've got her in with my final selection of Greenfinch hens, who I will show you in a, an upcoming video. Um, and she's a, a really nice bird some really good color on her a, a really good size a good head on her so i am really pleased to to have her and um, next year the plan will be to put her with a split silver greenfinch cock i bred her a bred this year and um, so we will get visual cocks and hens in a gate as well as normal hens from the pair um so she's last year's bird as well so i've got few years left out of her yet really I'm hoping and and um, hopefully we'll breed her if not her young into the really big exhibition line Now this week's special mention actually goes again to the Natives and Norwich Forum on uh, Facebook so if you haven't already joined, I would massively advise that you do join. Uh, the link is in the description below to the group. Um, and um, re really what I'm promoting here is to get you into the online exhibition. So uh, the, the, the um, exhibition generally um, is accepted with any type of show cage. So your region show cage, so that could be um, maybe yeah, a, a show cage from Belgium, that could be um, a Portuguese show cage, that could be, uh, you know, the, the Scottish or English pattern um, native cages like this, for example, your region show cage. So if you aren't already entered, please do enter. All of the information you need to know is on the announcement section on the forum. Um, so that has all of the classes of every single bird that you can enter into there. There are four categories with being British birds, the British finches. There's uh, also so room for soft bills on there. Uh, there is the mules and hybrids section. There are the Norwich section for the Norwich canaries. And then there is the any other variant of canary section. Um, so there is plenty of um, opportunity to show a lot of birds in there. I've myself, probably entered about 20 birds into the competition. So make sure you do go and join the group and you enter in the competition. All you have to do is leave a comment on the uh, correct post for what you want to enter. So you would say um, maybe class one times five birds, class three times two birds and class 10 times five birds, um, something like that. Um, and obviously you can decide on the classes you want to enter and uh, you can have as many entries as you want it's free and there are um, a lot of prizes to be won as well um, and there are some really fantastic breeders and some really fantastic breeders going to be entered into that and um, so it will be a great chance to get uh, a judge's perspective on your birds and where you could improve but also get an idea on how good your birds actually are so please join the natives and knights forum on facebook so it is now the end of this week's video so thank you very much for watching i really enjoy the fact that you all really enjoy these videos and um, it really gives me the, the encouragement and the inspiration to carry on making these videos for you so if you aren't already subscribed please subscribe down below um so you get to see all of my next videos and um, please hit the like button gives me a good idea on if you like the videos making sure you do like the videos and um, ultimately that you, you enjoy this content and um, also if you aren't as already again hit the notification bell and um, that will notify you every time I upload a video uh, so you won't miss it now um, the next video will probably be next Saturday however I might have chance to film for a bonus video next week um, so that will be a bit of a short video, but um, 
ultimately it could even be just on the new birds that I'm getting this weekend because I would really like to show you guys and I can't wait to show you the you these um these new birds so please subscribe if you're new please leave a like and hit the notification bell and I'll see you in the next one